and Smart Guy Productions. Hey there, my name is Adam and today I'm going to be showing you angles and other angular things. Whoa, let's get to it then. So, usually angles are measured in degrees. No, not your thermometer degrees or your heat degrees. Degrees degrees. So, now that we got that cleared over quite simply, there are many types of angles which are measured in these degrees. And me, I will be telling you these. So, to start off with, we have acute angles. Fine, fine, just acute angles. These angles are usually less than 90 degrees. So, to take it an example, 45 degrees, but not 97. We'll get to those types of angles later, or now. With obtuse angles, obtuse angles are usually more than 90 degrees. That is the best obtuse angle ever. Perfect. Very nice. Carrying on from that, so, you might be wondering, why does 90 degrees get the VIP treatment? Well, just so you know, 90 degrees looks like this and can be identified with this little square in the corner. So no matter what, it is always founded by the little square, no matter what. Now then, if you have been listening, which I'm sure you have, now it's time for an even better Q&A with Adam, myself. Number one, what is this angle? Acute, obtuse, or right angle? Number two, 91 degrees. Would this angle be acute, obtuse, or a right angle. Number three, what is this angle? Number four, what is this angle? Is it acute, obtuse, or a right angle? Finally, number five, 62 degrees. What angle would this make? Acute, obtuse, or right angle? Allow me, your host, to give you some time. Drum roll. Ding dong, ding dong. Ding dong, 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 Now that you have uh, listened to my beautiful music tag, please look at this answer sheet that I have so kindly provided you. If you have got five out of five, then do something. And now it's time for reflex angles. Hooray! These angles are usually more than 180 degrees and look kind of like a circle, surprisingly. However, now it's time to go to the past, the previous sh straight, eye, straight line angle. It, it's a line, it's got a semicircle on it. It's also 180 degrees, yeah, which means it's half of a full circle, which you know, and it's also 360 degrees. And that's pretty much it for this part, it means we are halfway through the video. It also means it's time for the next topic, shapes and other shape-like things. Do you remember your 2D shapes, your triangles? your rhombuses, your kites, and your rectangles, which are all usually me measured in blank squared. Squared. Yeah, forget about that. Boy, because we're going into the fourth dimension where you can actually smell the shapes. Or, or it's in the third dimension. It's cool. So shapes in the third dimension, or 3D, are measured in Blank cubed, measurement cubed. Or cubed? <laughs> you think shapes in like the sixth dimension? You know, where you smell them? They'll be a uh, sixth. Uh, I'd say so. Anyway, anyway, we're off course, we're off course. Shapes in the third dimension are usually divided into two sections prisms and other shapes. You haven't actually taught me what. The others are. But anyway, 
What makes a prism a prism? Well, this is a long explanation. So, whenever you find yourself a prism, if you cut it vertically in lots of tiny little pieces, all of the pieces, let's say, would have the same 2D face as it has on the prism. This also works for your yeah, circular prism, cylinders, and many, many others. But the reason it doesn't work for certain shapes, for example, the others, these won't have the same face. For example, the pyramid, as it shows, uh, these uh, will get smaller and smaller each time you cut it, as is a pyramid. Other examples of these are your cones. No, because they may have the same circular face, but they aren't all the same size as you have with prisms. How do you know that? Next! You also might be wondering, how do you calculate uh, the area of a prism? Well, firstly, you get your 2D shape from the front. For this one, it's a triangular prism, which is nice. Uh, you do the formula to find it out. In our case right here, it is base times height over 2. Memorized off by heart. And then, you get your previous answer. And then you times that by the overall length of your 3D shape. And you usually end up with, with the normal common shapes, base times height times length, which for the pedantic ones of you is the reason we have the three for the cubed, I believe. For now, let's hold my boring yammerings about the facts, and let's all put this, what we have learned, to the test. Here you have your common cuboid. As you can see, it is 5 centimeters width, 6 centimeters height and 10 centimeters overall length. As I told you, we need to calculate the front face. So 6 centimeters times 5 centimeters, I believe, would equal 30 centimeters squared. And again, as I told you previous, we need to use this answer times by the length, which is 10 centimeters. So 30 centimeters squared times by 10, I believe, would equal 300 centimetres cubed. So there you have it. This shape is 300 centimetres cubed. By the way, actually, our number here is the amount of space taken up by an object. Or, to put it simply, the volume. For cylinders, not very much, however, as I said, you have to calculate the front face. So you use the usual thing times the length. Mind blown, pi r squared times length. Brilliant. Well, I think it's time to draw it to the end. I have been your host, Adam, and farewell, goodbye, and have a nice day.